going to talk about the three exposure settings uh, on a camera, on any camera. Uh, if you can learn how, to, how these three things work and work together, you will be able to use any camera that you come across. From old school to new school, um, these are really the very, very basics of how image capturing works and exposure for your cameras. So the three things are going to be aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So first I'm going to start with aperture. Aperture is how large the hole is um, that your lens is opening up to. So when you have a lens um, on a camera, you can usually control how big it will open up. Now on our smartphones, unfortunately, we cannot control that. Uh, there are some models that are some starting to come out with two different lenses, so you can choose between the two. Um, but if you don't have a lens that's sticking out of your camera, you really don't have much control over this. Um, some of the point-and-shoot cameras, you have some control. It will go usually from, let's say, um, f4 to f8, but you won't have the full range. Um, only on DSLRs and old school film cameras and such, we really have the full range of apertures available. But it's still really important to understand how aperture works uh, in your photographs. So if you can see here, we have f1.4, and I know it's a little bit confusing at first, but the smaller the number, the larger the hole is that your camera is going to be opening up to. So 1.4, smaller number, larger opening. And as you can see from this little uh, graphic here, the person right here is sharp and then the background is all blurry. So when you see those portrait photographs where the background is completely blurred out, they're using a large aperture as f1.4, 2.0, 2.8, 4. Um, and this is letting more light into the camera. And we'll get a little bit more into that next week. But for now, we just need to focus on uh, learning how and remembering that a larger aperture is going to be more of a blurred background. Now if we go to this end, a smaller aperture means that everything will be pretty much in focus from someone that's really close up to you to the things that are in the very background. So this is more used for landscape photography where you want that flower in the foreground to be nice and crisp as, uh, as well as the mountains behind it um, and the clouds and all of that good stuff. So. Next, let's go down to shutter speed. Shutter speed is how fast the shutter on your camera is opening up. And when it opens up really fast, it's letting less light into the camera. When it's uh, opening up slower, it's letting in more light. <clears throat> now here, uh, one, one second, this is what the little marks here mean, one second, that's a pretty long exposure. This means half a second, quarter of a second, eighth of a second, all the way to one five hundredth, one thousandth, one two thousandth of a second. And these are all fractions. Uh, so one second is going to be a lot longer than one two thousandth of a second. Okay, so as you can see from the little graphics up here, the longer your exposure is, the more you'll be able to show blurred motion. And you might think, well, when would you like to show blurred motion? Well, there's a lot of times. Um, one of the most popular times is when people are shooting photographs of waterfalls and they want that really flowy look for the water. So you would go with a really long exposure. And let's say for sports, you want to freeze the action. So you want to go with the fast shutter speed. Uh, when you go to a longer shutter speed, you usually want to go to a tripod. Um, you're going to be safe usually at 1 60th of a second or faster. I know this one says best handheld, uh, but you know, for most cameras, I personally, I think that 1 60th is good. Now there are some cameras now that have stabilization and as long as you have steady hands, you can go down to even 1 15th of a second uh, without any blur, but I usually like to stick around here. <clears throat> so next let's go on down. Oh, before I head to ISO, here's an example. All right, so this image uh, I took using this really handy website called camerasim.com, and I'm gonna take you guys to it next week and really start talking about how all of these settings work together. 
but just to get an idea, um, so this was using a small aperture. So if we go back up here, we have our small aperture. And so we have a nice deep depth of field. So the depth of field means how much of the field of view, how much of the view of the scene you're seeing is actually in focus. So if you have a deep depth of field, everything's going to be in focus. If you have a shallow depth of field, only the main subject is going to be in focus. The thing that you are, um, that you are actually, uh, what do you call, uh, focused on. Okay. So here we have small aperture. Okay. So we have a deep depth of field. She's in focus. The background's pretty much in focus. We can see all the stuff going on back here. But at the same time, I had to use a slow shutter speed. And so you could see the motion of the little pinwheel that she's holding moving around. Okay, so let's go back up here to shutter speed. We have a longer shutter speed, and I believe that photo was around 1 30th of a second. So you're seeing motion. And this is going to be really dependent. Uh, how much motion you see is dependent on how fast uh, your subject is moving. It's going to be different, you know, if someone's moving kind of fast or super fast. Uh, so there's not one set rule on what's going to be blurry and what's not. Okay. Um, so then this photo, also taken on camera sim, uh, shows you shallow depth of field. Now we see that in comparison, that background isn't nearly as sharp as the first photo. We have a shallow depth of field. And you can also see the pinwheel is frozen we are not seeing movement in the pinwheel at all. It's just bam, right there. So we've frozen the motion by using a faster shutter speed. Okay, so next, uh, the last exposure control I'm gonna talk about is ISO, um, also referred to as ASA on older cameras and meters. Now ISO isn't controlling how much light is actually coming into the camera, like shutter speed and aperture, uh, shutter speed and aperture, that's exactly what it's doing. It's controlling the amount of light actually coming in through your camera lens and hitting your sensor. The ISO is actually controlling how sensitive your camera is to the light coming in. And um, it becomes kind of a balancing act. You usually want to keep a really low ISO, like 100. Um, and the big reason is because the higher ISO you go, the more noise and grain you're going to get in your photo. So you usually just want to keep it as low as possible. Uh, really it comes into play when your aperture and shutter speed aren't letting in as much light as you need for a good exposure. And so you need to take your ISO up to um, let more light in and get a good image. A well exposed image I should say. Um, now I know that this is, might sound kind of confusing and there's a lot of new terms I'm throwing around, but you'll get used to them. You know, that it'll, it'll become, uh, hopefully second nature to you after a while. All right. So here I took a picture of, uh, the Fresno City College Library at different ISOs. Okay. ISO 100, 400, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12,800, and 25,600. All right. So you can see, uh, especially when you get over here, that we start getting this grain happening, uh, what some people call noise, and it starts getting even like a color shift happening. And for um, online images, you know, I mean, you really can't see the difference on 32, 64, even 16. Now, if we were printing this, if you printed a photo at each one of these, you would be able to see it a lot more. But for online, you don't see it nearly as much. So that becomes important when you're taking a photo, thinking of what you're going to end up doing with it. If you're going to end up printing it out, you want to really pay attention to ISO. Now on most of your phone cameras, the ISO is just set automatically um, by your camera depending on the lighting conditions. <clears throat> and going back to uh, camera phones, uh, the shutter speed is also dictated by how much light there is. So if you're shooting on your phone and you have no control and it's just doing its automatic thing, um, if you're out in the middle of the day and it's super bright outside, your camera is probably gonna go to a higher shutter speed. If, it's, uh, if you're inside or it's getting darker, 
it's going to start going to a lower shutter speed to let more light in. Okay, so let's look at ISO just a little bit more. Here is a blown up version of this corner right up here for each of these ISOs. ISO 100, 1600, 3200, 2500. And you can kind of see that you're starting to get noise once you uh, zoom in here and then it gets worse and worse and worse. So that's the basics. Uh, we will go over this over and over and over again. Get used to these terms. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture.